Hello everybody, and welcome back to How Minecraft Works. In the last video in the series, I went over the implementation of infinite terrain generation. For this video, we will run the expensive mesh and data creation calculations in parallel to eliminate the large hiccups. In order to achieve this, we will use C-sharp tasks, IE numerators, and C-sharp action callbacks. So without further ado, let's get started. First in the world generator class, change the create chunk and generate data functions to return IE numerators. After doing that, in the chunk mesh creator class, make the create mesh from data function to also return an IE numerator. Now in the world generator class, use the system.threading.tasks namespace and apply the following changes to the generate data IE numerator. Using a C sharp task, the generation of the data will be run in parallel. Since it runs in parallel, we have to use a wait until call to wait for the task thread to finish before using its generated data. Since exceptions aren't thrown to the Unity editor in C sharp tasks, upon completion or failure of the task, we have to check if an exception exists and to log it if it does exist. Lastly, we can invoke the C-sharp action with the temp data as the argument so it can be stored. With that done, the threading of the data creation is complete. Now let's do this with the mesh creation. In the chunk mesh creator class, the changes are fairly similar to the changes done to the data creation function. Same as before, we place the mesh creation algorithm within a C-sharp task, yield for the task completion, and output any errors if they exist. Since threading is being used, change the get UVs at direction function to be the get UVs at direction T function. Once again, using a C sharp action, we use this to invoke an action with the value we want to return as the argument so we can do something with the data. Now back in the world generation class, we will run the generate data and create mesh from data coroutines and yield for their results. Lastly, in the infinite terrain generator class, have it use the start coroutine function to call the create chunk coroutine. You can also remove the generation of the 2x2 two two oh, no, grid of chunks in the world generator class. And with that done, parallel calculating of chunk generation has been successfully implemented. If you go back into Unity and try moving the cube around, you can see that there are no more large hiccups that occur. In the next video of this series, I will finally go over the manipulation of chunk data. To put it simply, terrain editing, so placing and breaking blocks. If you are interested in that, consider liking and subscribing, and on that note, I hope to see you all in the next video. Goodbye.